2007 to order. Will you please stand to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will you please call the roll? Council Agency Member Barnwell. Here. Balcone. Here. Horton. Here. House. Here. Schneider. Here. Williams. Here. Mayor Cherbloom. Here. Are there any changes to the agenda? Uh, there's one, Madam Mayor, okay. on item 20, which is the closed session. Uh, there's a uh, mistake on one of the addresses I just wanted to note, and that is where it refers to 125 Garden Street. Mm -hmm. That should say 125 State Street. Okay. You'll notice further down it says 125 State Street. They both should refer to 125 State Street. Okay. Okay, thank you. No other changes? Nope. Okay. Public comment. I have one. Ayala. Let me. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, greetings to you all. I. Um, it's difficult to say what I have to say in two minutes or uh, thereabouts. I have attended. Uh, Plant Santa Barbara meetings, and again, it's difficult to address the complexity of the subject in a minute or two. And um, so, I like to request some longer time to address my concerns. Uh, I try to watch your meetings on television, and I see how you examine proposals to build homes, and uh, you know, it takes a while to analyze the building of a home and so on. You can imagine how much longer it takes to address building a new world, which is my concern. You may sound sort of preposterous, but uh, this is what we do. This is what I do. Uh, we are the people of this continent, and uh, we are in trouble. Um, our lives have become sort of worthless. And for example, I'll ask to ask you a question. Uh, in Santa Barbara Independent, uh, a couple of issues ago, there was a letter criticizing the city for um, printing uh, Plant Santa Barbara questions in Spanish and English. And the man who wrote a letter wanted it to be written only in English. But uh, yet I see people dressed up in garb that uh, celebrates the Spanish culture. And uh, so it's a contradiction. And of course, the Spanish culture was uh, influenced by uh, uh, Arab culture. And uh, architecture that you admire so much as Spanish really has origins in Arab countries. The Moors, who occupied Spain for quite a few centuries. So uh, this issue of rebuilding a new world or uh, building a new one, it's complicated. And I would like that two of you, I understand that it's required that two of you would approve me entering me in your agenda for a future meeting. I would like to propose that if I may have uh, that uh, support from two of you, I may be able to return and address in more detail my concerns. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, I brought you some things. This is a video. Uh, it's called the High Performance Schools. Since uh, real building a new world would require knowledge and learning, uh, I've looked into the type of schools that might be uh, appropriate to develop this plan. And uh, I'm going to give you, I brought one for each one of you. Thank you. Um, I have also brought something that I wrote seven, in 1970, more or less, upon meeting the Hopi people. And that's another story. But I'm going to leave, again, one for each one of you. That may give you some background on my thoughts. And I have brought some, oh, sorry. That's okay. I have brought some newsletters that uh, we helped the Hopi elders when they were still alive uh, publish. And uh, these are rare items. These are the actual words of the Hopi elders of the traditional village of Hot Villa, okay. uh, where it is considered the seat of authority for this continent prior to the 
become and becoming America. So um, recently an elder died. Uh, he was a uh, Shoshone elder who fought the uh, continuing testing of nuclear weapons. And uh, in memory of him, I have brought this item where he again asked his organization was come rebuild a new world. So okay. these are sort of mementos of okay. the work that I've, I'm engaged in. Okay, and I thank you very much. And these are a couple um, of poems that address the concerns okay. that uh, we're looking at. I brought one for each one of you. Okay. I hope that uh, when I email you, I will have a good news that two of you have agreed to support me in my returning to have a little longer time to engage a in a conversation with you. I'd like to know your thoughts about these matters that concern okay. me, including the death of young people in our cities um, okay. and continuing violence. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Okay, Paula Perot, followed by Jamie Josem. Hi. 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 Good afternoon, Madam Mayor and Council members. Um, I'm just here today to introduce myself as um, my name is Paula Perotti. I recently have a new position as the PTA president for the 15th district, which is the whole Santa Barbara County. So I'm here today to introduce myself in that new role. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanted to let you know that um, as a board, we had a meeting last month and we've set some new goals. And our goals are that we would like to reach out to our community to um, offer ourselves as a resource. We want to have better communication with everyone out there in the community. And we have a tremendous amount of resources available to us. And we would like to offer that to you. That's so great. we're expanding and offering that and letting you know we're here, we're out there. And also to let you know that um, another one of our top priorities is safe routes to school. As you yeah. know, that's something that's very dear and near to my heart. That's something that I'm very passionate about. And um, so we thank you for your continued support of that. Mm -hmm. And as you know, Pedro Nava has been working very hard on pieces of legislation. And there is a bill right now that's just passed the Senate um, Transportation, uh, AB 321, which will um, extend um, school zones from a 500 feet to a thousand feet and lower the speed limit within 500 feet in front of the school so Good. it's going to be optional It'll be up to each individual city or county to adopt that by a resolution so if it does pass um, out of the House of Senate and then the governor does okay it we may be back asking you to uh, approve it in some of your city schools. So we um, look forward to working with you on that. And also as district president, I sit on the state um, commission and my commission is community concerns. And I'd like to let you know that the five priorities that we have picked this year to make um, a top priority in the state of California are gang violence, drug and alcohol prevention, internet safety, safe routes to school and teen driving. So as I work with the, our state board of managers, I will be bringing back information to you and hoping that we can all collaborate, collaborate and work together on these issues. Thank so, you so much for your like time we, today. Sounds like we have similar goals, so good. we certainly could work together and yes. it would be good for you to bring it back to us. Thanks. Thank, Thank you so much. Mayor, could I just ask that you leave yeah. some information for us so that we all know how to get in touch with you. Absolutely. And, uh, I'd like to have a conversation with you myself. Absolutely. I'll we'll do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we're followed by Jamie Jo Sim. Madam Mayor, Council Members, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I just wanted to follow up with what Paula was saying, too. Uh, the Santa Barbara Area Council would like to also thank you for your support of our community and its children and the resolution that you're about to pass today and also the Safe Routes program that is in that um, resolution as well. So thank you for that. Um, I brought with me today some information that we have been trying to uh, disseminate into the community and we think that it's important. So we like to, as Paula said, work in conjunction with mm -hmm. you if we can. But uh, the information that we've really been working on is getting out to the community, um, kids and the law, and when I turn 18, and it talks about the laws, also parent responsibility, and it's in English and Spanish. So okay. we think it's a great tool, and we'd like to be able to work with you together in okay. the programs that you have or Good. think it out. Thank Good. you. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming by. Um, I have no other uh, public uh, slips, but we have Sally 
Yeah, come on up. Mm -hmm. Sally Hamilton. Hello, Madam Mayor and City Council members. I'm Sally Hamilton, and I'm here with the Santa Barbara Toba Sister yeah. City Organization. And we have the 16th group of students coming from Toba. They come every summer during Fiesta. They stay here during this week, and then our students go back to and have a direct exchange to their house during their Fiesta, which is called Obon. So it's a wonderful exchange program. And I want to thank Councilman Horton for keeping such close contact with us. He, we just had a party the other day, and he came. And thank you very nice. much. So I'd like to introduce these students okay. to you. Would you come up? First, we have the chaperones. This is Ginger Gelson from Santa Barbara. She's she's a teacher here in Santa Barbara. Oh, okay. Ginger Gelson is a teacher at Santa Barbara Junior High School, and her partner is Machiko Hamaguchi, who teaches elementary school. Now, the students are here. Come up, come up here, maybe. And yeah, if you want to take a picture, you can while they're standing here. The parents can. Okay, this is Lucas Oswald with Tomi Masu Mazur Nomura. Here's Tomi Masu. We have Nicholas Vaughn and Kyosuke Sibata. Kyosuke. <laughs> Olivia Gerson and her student is Nozomi Teraz Terazawa. Hi. Here. And Kimi Van Winkle and her student is Yukimi Murase. Hi. So thank you very much, and it's a privilege to bring them here and show them how, how our democracy works. Thank oh, you. Thank you very much, and welcome. Welcome to all of you. And I know our students will have a good time in Toba, too, learning about how their democracy works. It's very good. That's right. <laughs> they have about 30 people on their city council. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I don't think we need that. No, we're doing fine. <laughs> Poor Steve, he would be getting emails from 30 people. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, students. Have a good time at Fiesta. Thanks. Okay, we're on consent calendar now. Um, anybody want to, you have some things to read, Brenda. Why don't you go ahead and then we'll see if we want to take anything off. Item number three, election authorization for Medicare-only coverage for eligible PERS miscellaneous members. Recommendation that council adopt by reading of title only a resolution of the council of the city of Santa Barbara requesting authorization to conduct a division of the retirement system for Medicare-only coverage among eligible members of the PERS miscellaneous retirement plan. And item number 11, introduction of ordinance for federal aviation administration agreement. Okay. Including oh, recommendation sorry. B, that council introduce and subsequently adopt by reading of title only an ordinance of the Council of the City of Santa Barbara approving a memorandum of agreement dated August 7, 2007, between the City of Santa Barbara and the U.S. Department of Transportation, Federal Aviation Administration, for all navigation equipment at the Santa Barbara Municipal Airport. Okay. Sorry, I interrupted there. Okay. Uh, without... Uh, Without re objection, we're going to wait for the reading. Uh, do we have anything that anybody wants to take off? Mr. House? Madam Mayor, uh, number seven, please. Okay, number seven. Go ahead and read number seven, if you can. Item number seven, response to the report of the 2006-2007 Santa Barbara County Civil Grand Jury entitled Law, Justice, and Public Safety, Selected Community Challenges. Okay, Mr. House? Yes, Madam Mayor. Um, as I read the, our, our response, uh, and it goes a little bit along with what we were hearing a moment ago, I had noticed that um, our the safety town, bike rodeos, safe routes to schools were not mentioned as things okay. that we're doing, and it seems like that should be included in our response. So um, it was just something I caught last night as I was reading, and I thought maybe I should mention that and ask if we could add that to um, our response. Okay. We've been, uh, we have... Uh, under, safe routes to school uh -huh. and the bike rodeos in safety town. Uh -huh. Under which finding or where would you? It like would be to in the, at the uh, uh, end recommendation five on page okay. four. It would be under the response and it would say um, under where it says we also have been very successful in obtaining grant funding for traffic related city needs citywide. It could also then list um, these items that we're doing with the school, working with the school children. Right. Very good. And their parents. Okay. And that was it. That was my only addition to that. Okay, so we're going to amend item number seven um, to add those words. And I think we can still vote on everything. 
as amended. Insomnia has its benefits, huh, Grant? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what gets into me sometimes. <laughs> thanks no, for, have, thanks that, for catching that for it's us. It's actually a very good catch. <clears throat> I move the, uh, the consent calendar amendment. Okay, as amended? As amended. Okay. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No, that was a very good catch. Thank you. Okay, we are on to item number 15. Well, it should be a report from the Finance Committee first. Mr. Horton. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The Finance mm -hmm. Committee met at 1 o'clock today. We reviewed the uh, financial and investment reports, and we moved those on to uh, a later date at Council. Okay. Thank you. Item number 16. No, I'm sorry, 15. Yeah, item 15. Item number 15, proposed amendment to the Central City Redevelopment Project Plan to extend agency's power of eminent domain. Recommendation A, that the Redevelopment Agency Board adopt by reading of title only a resolution of the Redevelopment Agency of the City of Santa Barbara approving and adopting the report to the City Council on the proposed amendment to the Redevelopment Plan for the Central City Redevelopment Project to extend the Redevelopment Agency's power of eminent domain as authorized by California Redevelopment Law Section 33333.4 a3 and submit the report proposed amendment and negative declaration addendum relating to relating thereto to the city council and b that council introduce and subsequently adopt by reading of title only an ordinance of the council of the city of santa barbara amending ordinance numbers 3566 3923 4438 4894 5098 5089 5314 5363 and 5388 and approving and adopting the proposed amendment to the redevelopment plan for the Central City Redevelopment Project. Thank you, Brenda. Okay, Mr. Gustafson. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the Council. Uh, just to reiterate your meeting jointly with the Redevelopment Agency today uh, to, to consider the action of the agency adopting a resolution approving a report that's been provided to you about amending the redevelopment project area uh, plan to extend eminent domain. And then as a council, after that's been submitted to you by the agency board, uh, in that same action, you're considering uh, introducing an ordinance and discussing it today, and then in a subsequent meeting, adopting that ordinance. I have a brief PowerPoint presentation for you about this activity. Uh, I wanted to just uh, visit briefly the whole issue of eminent domain authority so people can clearly understand it and be comfortable with it. It is the power to condemn private property in exchange for just compensation that government entities have. Redevelopment in particular has the authority to uh, exercise eminent domain for the purpose of uh, promoting economic development or other activities that would eliminate blight in a project area. And I really wanted to stress that the restrictions on this power are stringent and that it's I think considered by redevelopment agencies in the state, and I know particularly by this redevelopment agency, as a, a, an august power that isn't used lightly. And even if we wanted to use it lightly, there's a lot of restrictions in the law that would prevent us from doing so. Um, we first, before we would ever do this as a last resort, must have engaged in a, at least an offer of fair market value determined by appraisals and negotiated in good faith with the property owner. Uh, there are lots of relocation benefits, business good, w goodwill loss benefits, and relocation benefits and allowances eligible to anybody who's, whose property is taken or business is disrupted by eminent domain. And there's a whole process of public hearings and then remedies in court for the property owner. And my experience over time, the few times that any of the agencies I've been involved with have exercised eminent domain, uh, the expectation of that agency from the beginning is that, and this is a secret you shouldn't let out, but that you know, quite often the fair market value is the beginning point for negotiations for properties. So I just want to stress that it's seldom used and it's carefully used and there's many, many legal protections for folks who may be, whose property may be subject to that eminent domain. Uh, I wanted to also point out again the boundaries of the redevelopment project area within which we could use eminent domain for regular redevelopment activities and outside of which, but within the jurisdiction of the city, we could use eminent domain for affordable housing projects. But just for the public's benefit, again, the project area includes the downtown and the waterfront bounded on the north by Vic Victoria Street. On the east, the boundary line comes down Santa Barbara Street to the freeway goes down the freeway to Milpas, runs south to the waterfront from Milpas, then goes back along Cabrillo Boulevard, swings out, includes the wharf and the harbor area and the, and the breakwater, 
and then comes back up to Castillo Street, runs up to the freeway, and then runs along the edge of the freeway back up to Victoria. So that defines the boundary where we would have the power to use them in domain for regular redevelopment activities. Um, I won't repeat this code section that's already been stated, but uh, this is the pertinent redevelopment law, uh, that redevelopment agencies have a time limit not to exceed 12 years for commencement of eminent domain proceedings. This is a recognition by the legislature that this is a very significant power and that there should be uh, reasonable controls on it and it should be revisited at, on a regular basis. Uh, you can only extend that 12-year period by an amendment of the redevelopment plan. In this case, it's our Central City Redevelopment Project Area Plan. After the agency finds, based on substantial evidence, two things, that significant blight remains within the project area, and this blight cannot be eliminated without the tool of eminent domain. Uh, and in extending the eminent domain authority through adopting an ordinance, Neither the legislative body nor the agency is required to undertake the full project area plan amendment process. Um, the full project area plan amendment process is as complicated and long as starting an entire new project area. This is really a much more simplified process that I've described to you earlier, that a report is provided, the report is adopted and forwarded to the council, and then the council adopts an ordinance. I wanted to give you a little history about the redevelopment project area and our eminent domain authority because they're inextricably entwined in terms of the dates that we're dealing with. The redevelopment, Central City Redevelopment Plan was adopted in 1972. It was activated in 1977, but the clock started for all of our legal purposes in 1972. In 1986, the legislature en enacted these 12-year limits for eminent domain authority, so we amended our plans and started a 12-year clock at that point. And that expired in 1998, and at that point, we engaged in the same process to extend our eminent domain authority um, to August 2007. That bears a little explanation I'll go into in a moment. Um, the plan, ex what happened was we assumed that 40 years after, or actually in August of 2007, was when the plan was slated to expire based on our original plan back in 1972. In 1999, there was additional legislation that said older project areas like ours, who, which didn't uh, plan for a full 40-year life of the project area, could amend in the same simple process their plan to extend the life of the project area for 40 years. Uh, so at that point, we took that action, and that extended the life of our project area from 2007 to 2012. What we did, however, as you can see previously, rather in 1998, rather than extend the eminent domain authority to what would have been 12 years later, we extended it to the point that everyone here thought the redevelopment project area would be expired in 2007. So what happened in 1999, we got uh, additional years out to 2012. and 2004 through 2007, we got additional years of life of the project area because that was the quid pro quo for making the ERAF payments uh, the state shift of funds during the state budget crisis. So that got us to, to actually to 2015, which is our current expiration date. So what we're proposing with this authority is, and the language is specific in the ordinance and all the documents you got, that the authority would extend either to 2019, which is 12 years from now, or to plan expiration, whichever comes sooner. So this is a process that the agency will not have to undertake again during the life of the, the project area, unless, of course, there are additional extensions that lead us beyond 2019. The, uh, the law also says that you, one of the findings you have to make is blight remains that needs to be addressed and, and it needs the assistance of the tool of eminent domain or it may need that to accomplish the eradication of that blight. In your report, there's a detailed listing of the blight that still remains in the project area. Uh, in this report here in the PowerPoint, you'll see some highlighted uh, items that are examples of remaining blight. Um, I'll let you read through them. I won't necessarily go through them all for you. Those are ones that have to do with infrastructure, having to do with recreational and cultural opportunities. And having to do with economic development opportunities. That first, that bullet in particular addresses the concept of the uh, transit village that's being contemplated at Carrillo and Chapala. 
and then in the area of housing, uh, highlighting inadequate housing for our workforce, for our critical public safety workers, inac inadequate supportive housing for the mentally ill and the chronically homeless. It's all about uh, the 10 year plan to end chronic, chronic homelessness that we've engaged in. So back again to the, in, in wrapping up to the recommendations, we recommend that you uh, adopt a resolution approving the report that was provided to you that makes those findings, uh, that you make the findings pursuant to the state law, and that you submit the report and the proposed amendment and declaration to the council. And then as a council, you introduce and subsequent, subsequently adopt an ordinance amending the plan and extending the agency's power of eminent domain. And the, before you go to discussion, the only other thing I wanted to point out to you was, um, and uh, Member Falcone, uh, I'm sure, is better versed than I am in this, but uh, we did uh, discuss in the agenda report to you that there's a proposed constitutional amendment, ACA 8, which has been sponsored by a lot of public agencies, including the League and including the California Redevelopment Association, that was was that is proposing that um, a residential relocation. I'm sorry, residential uh, condemnation, eminent domain, uh, would no longer be permitted. Uh, redevelopment agencies can do that any longer. In part, that's a response to a much more stringent. Um, propositions that have been suggested. If you remember Prop 90 on the previous uh, uh, ballot, uh, we may be revisiting something like Prop 90. And this ACA 8 is an attempt for public agencies to kind of self-police. And, and uh, the, the outcome of that would be that residential uh, condemnation would no longer be uh, approved. And I think Ia can probably update us a bit more than I, but I understand that the coalition behind that might be uh, experiencing a bumpy uh, road or two, and, and so it's, we can't really tell you what the outcome it would be. If it passed, it would mean that uh, today you would be extending your eminent domain authority for both commercial, residential, industrial, all of those properties, but you might be precluded from exercising it for residential property in the future. Okay, Ms. Sarkhani. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gustafson, Madam Mayor. Um, having just come from the uh, Board of Directors meeting at the League of California Cities, the update on ACA 8, which is being carried in the Assembly by Assemblymember Hector De La Torre, and very successfully, I might add, uh, his counterpart um, on the Republican side is Mike Villanus, and he has been working diligently to keep a coalition of Republicans together as well in the Assembly. Uh, it is a broadly uh, worked on coalition not just of legislators but also the League of California Cities, the League of Conservation Voters, the Sierra Club, uh, the Redevelopment Agency, and a tremendous number of other folks that are, are involved in this coalition are, are working diligently. There was a compromise or an alternative uh, broached by some of the, the Assembly Republicans, but that didn't get enough votes and it has died on the floor, so we don't have to worry about, about that. Uh, we look forward to really maintaining the good relationship and keeping this coalition together in order to pass it, probably not by the next couple of weeks, but we're looking forward to August and possibly September uh, to see the next major movement on this. What Mr. Gustafson referred to in terms of another measure that might look a lot like Proposition 90 uh, is forwarded by some special interests. It's called the California Property Owners and Farmland Protection Act. Act. While our, our uh, ACA 8 would primarily restrict redevelopment agencies from uh, exercising eminent domain on residential properties, you know, so we never will hear again about, you know, grandma losing to the railroad kind of a scenario, uh, it does still leave in place a lot of mechanisms whereby redevelopment agencies can protect police, fire, and public safety, you know, the, the police protections and the public safety protections that governments have and should retain. The other bill, it's not a bill, it's an initiative, the uh, Property Owner and Farmland Protection Act really goes beyond the scope of what Prop 90 would have done. It gets rid of all eminent domain in any way, in any shape, in any form, which is probably not uh, in the public interest. Uh, I hope we won't have to hear too much more about it. We are working with the primary group that is forwarding this initiative, and we do hope to come to some compromises on it, but uh, that yet remains to be seen. And if we have our own initiative on the ballot, 
then and have to collect signatures and we may have to go that route but that's not where we are yet and if you have further questions on what's transpiring currently up in the legislature on this issue I have plenty of materials that I'm more than happy to share but I don't want to take any more of the board's time thank you okay Mr. Madam Mayor, that, that's mm -hmm. good news from Councilwoman uh, Falcone the one other thing I wanted to add in closing is uh, when we amended our plan to allow the extension of eminent domain in 1998, we did an initial study and a negative declaration was adopted. It was construed as having no Im impact on, on the area. And uh, we have provided to you an amendment to that negative declaration would come to the same conclusion for this proposed amendment as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Mr. Uh, Williams. Well, I'm, I'm happy to vote for this but with the understanding I think that is in as articulated here that this is the mechanism of last resort uh, that uh, I think in particular to deal with uh, public safety um, issues uh, often a city needs to have this as as an as an ultimate um, a way to um, protect the public safety um, we do have places in the city where that are uh, where drug dealing and, and prostitution are endemic and those tend to be places that property owners are not willing to take care of and uh, of course our hope always is to solve those by other means but if they are not solved um, through negotiation and working with the property owner there needs to be another recourse uh, otherwise these places continue to hurt our young people in particular okay thank you mr. Horton I'm happy to support it as well I would like to move um, staff recommendations a and B okay any other discussion all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed thank you thank you mr. Gustafson item number 16 please item number 16 interview and appointment of youth intern applicant to Park and Recreation Commission okay Santa Mayor Bloom and council members, it's my pleasure today to bring forward Christina Gonzalez as an applicant to be an intern on the Park and Recreation Commission. Christina has served on the Youth Council for two years, is currently the vice chair. She has also served for a number of years on the ADAP Youth Coalition. So she's been very active in the community. Uh, one of the things I really like about Christina is though her comments may be outspoken in some ways mm -hmm. she has very thoughtful comments and I, we look sure. forward to working with her so Christina Gonzalez thank you hi. Christina hi how are you I'm well how are you good good we uh, I enjoyed sitting down with Christina one of the one of the perks of my office one of the good things about the office is getting to uh, sit down and getting to know Christina a little bit so um, do you want to talk just tell these folks where you are in school and, and what your plans are and all that sort of thing um, well I go to Bishop Garcia Diego High School I'll be a senior uh, this year and um, I definitely plan on going to the university um, I'm looking at a, maybe a political science international relations major um, maybe pre-law not quite sure yet <laughs> um, and my heart's desire is to speak for the youth of Santa Barbara as um, well as advocate for them. Mm -hmm. okay. And you didn't mention it, but she emphasized her love of the city, so that's a very nice thing. She really loves the city, and it's very Thank nice you. to see that uh, from our young people. Mr. House. Well, Madam Mayor, um, I just want to uh, comment. Uh, first of all, uh, having gotten to know your uh, mother and father, Abel and, and Leona, it's been uh, years ago over in the east side with the Merchants Association and uh, kind of getting to know you too a little bit as, as uh, time has gone on. It's really wonderful to see um, what, a, what a leader you are becoming and uh, listening to you speak. And I think outspoken is, is said in the best of, of intentions <laughs> because this is somebody who is really articulate and um, who really can speak um, in a well-informed way and is very very open and and just very compelling so I I'm gonna just jump right in and I move the staff recommendation uh, for um, uh, Christina Gonzalez to be a youth intern in Park and Recreation Committee. Second. <laughs> Everybody wanted to second it that was good. Uh, Ms. Schneider. 
Well, I was just going to echo that being outspoken is good and mm -hmm. it's a good thing and, and do feel free to contact us when Thank issues you. come up and I, I know you're officially interning with the Parks and Rec Commission but certainly um, we, we want to hear what you have to say as well. Thank so. you. It's greatly appreciated. Thank right. You. Mr. Williams, did you? Ms. Falcon. I think we've gotten a chance to work with each other over three years. Uh, uh, Christina has been on the Youth Council and been very active and um, she really has a uh, a heart for um, for public service. Um, she has a heart for the East Side and her community, uh, a heart for God, and a heart um, for the city. and And she's a great choice. Good, 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 Ms. Falcone. Well, I want to congratulate you, Christina, on speaking up and speaking out, and for the really gracious and lovely way that you do it. Speaking out and being heard doesn't have to be acoustic and brash, and you bring grace and elegance, and I encourage you to keep that up. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Shall we vote? Oops, Mr. Burnwell. I, I just wanted to say that in my experience, these highly qualified youth like this are the people who end up sitting in these chairs later on down mm -hmm. the line. There you go. And so I, I welcome you to that fraternity of people who are willing to spend time for the town because they love it. And we all we all greatly admire that. And so thank you very much. Thank you. And we may decide to vote for her in the future is what you're saying. That's Indeed. Good. If, <laughs> very if good. I can see and hold a pen at the time <laughs> no. in which she finally, finally does run. <laughs> we hope so. Okay. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thanks. Thanks for Thank coming you. by, Christina. <laughs> Very good. Those are the fun things to do, aren't they? Okay. Item number 17, please. Item number 17, National League of Cities Council on Youth Education and Families Platform, including recommendation B, that council adopt by reading of title only a resolution of the Council of the City of Santa Barbara in support of the city platform of the National League of Cities Council on Youth Education and Families for strengthening families and improving outcomes for children and youth. Okay, we should note that the Youth Council is very well represented here today in, in the audience, but Ms. Hanna? Mayor Bloom and council members, I'm Sarah Hanna, the Recreation Programs Manager. Um, it's my pleasure to be here today to talk about the National League of Cities City Platform for Strengthening Families and Improving Outcomes for Children and Youth, the Youth Platform. <laughs> I wanted to begin with a, a little bit of discussion on the National League of Cities. Um, they are one of the oldest and largest national organizations re representing municipal governments. Um, they serve as an advocate and a resource for over 18,000 cities nationwide. We look to them to come to us and help give local leaders tools and knowledge to serve our communities better. And we hope that this, what we are bringing forward right now, the youth platform, will be one such tool to help our municipal leaders. The platform itself um, is based on the premise that in order to have strong cities, you have to have strong families. And so the National League of Cities' goal is to improve the quality of life through all families and to help cities in assisting to get to that point. The, this, this platform has been adopted by 71 cities in 31 different states. Over the last couple of months, the uh, Committee on Youth and Children has been looking at the, the platform and, and seeing how the city can serve its uh, constituents better by adopting the platform. It continues to demonstrate the city's commitment to youth, and so therefore the Committee on Youth and Children has brought it forward to, for city council approval and adoption today. The platform is broken into two different parts. The first part is the infrastructure. This is the mechanism or the process of change. It's the way that the public can be involved in the work with elected officials and municipal staff. So there are a couple of different components of the infrastructure. Um, and many of them we do a really good job of at this time. The first one being in including all types and members of the public in advising youth, uh, in advising public officials and in, in, dis, in different advisory capacities. We do this with the Youth Council, through Plan Santa Barbara, through our numerous boards and commissions, and through the numerous advisory committees we, today. Santa Barbara citizens are very involved in our local government, and as you know, are very outspoken. So the platform will further bring 
the residents together with leaders to bring their voices forward. As you know, we also have a very strong collaboration between the city and the Santa Barbara School District. Um, we have regular meetings with them. We have a, a very strong joint use agreement, and we have regular interaction between the board members and city council members. This is another very essential part of the inter infrastructure for bringing public good forward for action. Also, we support youth voice. We have youth council, as we've seen, we've also just nominated another person to put as an intern on a board, and we have at this time two youth council members appointed to the Plan Santa Barbara Advisory Committee. So on many different levels, we are listening to youth voice and asking them to come forward with their opinions. Finally, the, to, in order to make sure that this is a strong platform, we need to measure our progress over time. And as you know, the city of Santa Barbara, it is a very strong, uh, it's this very strong direction from the city administrator to have performance measures in place and to look at different ways that we can serve the public and to measure those and seeing that we're meeting our goals and our measurements. There are different ways to have benchmarks and a scorecard and to um, track our outcomes. But overall, we need to watch what we're doing and see that we are making progress over time. The second part of the platform has to do with the different program areas that, uh, that community leaders can bring forward. There are opportunities of programming to act in the behalf of children and of youth and families. And I'm not going to go into each one of these program areas, but you can see that they kind of are both go over time in a child's development, but also many aspects of their life, whether family life, at schools, or in the community. Um, th these different key steps connect youth, and if they are connected in many of these ways, then it will increase their odds of thriving in, in our community, being solid citizens in our community, contributing in a positive way, and therefore the whole community can be healthier. In order to design our Santa Barbara platform off of the National League of Cities template, we contacted all of the departments and from eight different departments, input was received in, the, in both the Part A, or Part 1, and the Part 2 structure. We also received information from the City Administration, City Council, and the Santa Barbara School District. Because as you know, it goes citywide and across very many different aspects of our community. Um, and to begin with, we have over a hundred different city services that were identified, and um, that's quite extensive, and it, and it feels really good to already have so many commitments in place, but then we also have about 40 different recommended actions that departments put forward that places where we need to go to better expand our services. Many of them are taking place right now. One of the, I wanted to go first, though, to some of the services that are taking place right now. We have a very strong youth council and plan Santa Barbara. We have a very strong joint use agreement with the school district. And then, as you see, going through all of these other areas, different departments are putting forward different efforts to support youth and families within our community, each one individually strengthening them and, as a whole, bringing the city up to a higher level. Some of the areas that uh, played across kind of in a, oops, in a more, um, we, it played out a couple of times throughout the platform. These are some of the more broad issues. Um, and we have taken steps to achieve many of these, is the expansion of after school and summer recreation programs, the appointment of youth, new youth interns, uh, strengthening and continuing to build our collaboration with the, with the school district. Um, improving child care opportunities. We've been working with the uh, County Office of Early Education and Child Care. Implementing bilingual recreation programs. We're looking to right now hire some bi bilingual instructors so we can support that idea. And the library continues to look at different ways to extend their literacy materials out to the public. So these are some of the more general, broad-reaching action items uh, that were, I drew out of the platform itself for where we can go in the future. The committee on, Council Committee on Youth and Children asked that the Youth Council be able to review this document prior to coming to City Council, and I did take it to the July 6th meeting, uh, and they, they were very interested. It was a new idea from them, so 
there was a couple of different steps as i'm explaining it to you today that they were interested in they wanted to know how it would be implemented they didn't want it to be a static document they wanted it to be a living breathing document and for us to continue to take steps to knock things from the unmet need area to something in the action items so uh, they looked at it in that way and they also were very interested in participating in future updates and as we do want it to be a living document we do want other members of the community to have opportunity to add to the list for to come to the council committee on youth and children and talk about it and we will be doing periodic updates so the youth council did recommend to approve the document and um, we wanted you to know that once it was adopted that we were going to go to the National League of Cities and have it included in the national program and that we do plan to intend to periodically update it would be more like the legislative platform that you look at every year ways that we can use it departments uh, challenge to take things off the unmet need side or add things that for future progress so um, we do look to Move, keep moving it forward and to come back to you annually with updates and be able to, to benchmark our progress on this document. Uh, in, Nancy Rapp was not able to be here today. She became ill this morning and she really wanted to be here because we do find it to be a big step um, for the city and a very important document for the city. Um, but I do have my, my step department head <laughs> Paul Casey here with us today um, Paul odd. Casey has been very supportive of the youth platform and mm -hmm. wanted to say so if you were. not sure I'm old enough to be a step, step department, department head, head. <laughs> Mr. Casey good afternoon Madam Mayor council members just wanted to touch a little bit we had not number of questions as we were looking at this about how this fits in with plan Santa Barbara and what yeah. will plan Santa Barbara do for youth and, and will there be a youth element and things like that and as looking at this document and as we examined and, and prepared it and came up with it we're four years ahead of the game by adopting this document today you know a, a general process that might come out is that the plan Santa Barbara would have said we need to have a focus on youth go develop a program that lays out your visions your goals your implementation steps and some you know bench marks to shoot and aim for go and bring that back to council for further adoption that's what this document already does and so I think this is a wonderful way to have jump started uh, the council's focus and interest on youth ahead of plan Santa Barbara and as Miss Hannah said it's a living breathing and evolving document as well and so as new issues come up we want to amend it and, and make it be reflective of current situations we can do that as well but this is a really good comprehensive uh, document for kind of moving us forward quickly in that regards that's good that's good. Okay. Anybody on the council want to? Um, yes, Mr. Barnwell. I, I noticed we have our librarian here, Miss. Uh, right. I mean, I wonder if she'd like to tell us a little bit about what the library is doing in conjunction with this, okay. because I noticed several components of this plan include library activities. Right. Right. And I've got several people from the public too. I just wanted to know if you had any questions or yeah. Okay. Okay. Hi. Good afternoon, Hi. Madam Mayor, members of the council. Irene Macias, library director. Um, I've actually brought with me Janice uh, Rorick. She's our senior librarian for youth services and especially outreach. She is very, very active in the community, belongs to a number of organizations that support youth activities, um, and is always coming to me with another program that she would like to participate in. So um, I'll have her tell, give you a little bit of an update on what we've been doing. Okay, sure. Ms. Borg. Any particular thing you'd like to talk about, Mr. Barnwell? Well, uh, you know, we've had some unfortunate circumstances associated with youth in our community. We've had some gang violence and some stabbings. And I know that the library has been active in their their poetry program, for example, which I participated a couple of times. And I, I don't know if the general public knows all of the activities that the library does in terms of outreach. And, and I know that you've got your, the, the books on tape and you've got a whole bunch of things. So I just mm -hmm. thought might, maybe now would be the time where you could just talk briefly about what the library is doing focused on kids and youth. Sure, maybe the easiest way to do this would be to start at the earliest age um, because that's kind of where a lot of our focus has been in the past and we've, you know, we've done a lot of, we have outreach to 30 um, bilingual classes, story time classes at different preschools in the area and those actually come from Isla Vista to Carpinteria. So we do a lot of outreach at that preschool level um, both in English and, and bilingually in, in Spanish. Um, we also do some, um, we have a reach out and read program at two local clinics, neighborhood clinics. 
Um, and that's a, a doctor-based program where the doctor gives the child a book and asks the parents to read to the child. So it's really a literacy enhancement program. Um, we also have volunteers we, you know, who will be reading in the waiting rooms. And we also go into the schools, eight schools this year. Um, we've expanded one more. We used to be seven. Will every second and third grader in eight schools in the area will be given a book three times a year. And at the same time, we do a lot of literacy activities with them. We get the parents involved. We invite the parents to come. Um, we're also doing some outreach to the older level by what you were talking about. The poetry contest is a big thing every year. We get involved. I think we had 800 entries one year, which was a, a lot, which was almost more than we could deal with. Um, but it gets the schools really involved. We visit the schools. Um, the other thing we do is we have teen depositories in a lot of locations where students cannot arrive. So both the teen centers in Isla Vista and Santa Barbara have teen depositories that the books get rotated on. Um, we also do some programming with, we were just over at the teen center the other day um, to build, to um, kind of pub our summer movies and some things that we do. Um, we also do a lot of outreach in the schools themselves. This year, for example, for the summer reading program, we worked with both the Fun in the Sun United Way program and we also worked with the Parks and Rec program to, to actually move the bookmobile to the sites where those programs were happening for the summer. So we do a lot of that kind of thing also. And just within the library itself, I think we have uh, probably about 600 students si signed up for the summer reading program this year. I think Galita has over 1,000 now. And it averages about 4,000 4, or so every year that we have involved in the summer reading, which means we make at least six contacts with that, those children during the summer. They come in and they actually tell us about the books they're reading. We actually have a component that most places don't do anymore. So we get a lot of really interaction with the families and the children. Um, We've partnered with the adult library and with California State Library to do several programs. We have an LE program, which is English Language Learners Initiative. It was a governor's initiative that has continued to be funded. And we have several programs. We had book clubs in the junior high level. Um, we had book clubs at the teen parent programs for a couple of years. Um, right now, we're actually working with Cesar Chavez School, um, doing a, a literacy component with them during the school year. Um, and we also have the, the new ELF program, which we just started, which um, means on Saturdays, um, we actually have six sessions and the parents come with the children and have um, a story time and then the parents go with one of the direct, one of the people to actually have discussion about how it's how you can be a better parent in terms of literacy what you can do to encourage literacy in your children lots of pieces of that component and then they come back at the end for a story time with their children again and in the middle the children are with our staff having a fun craft or doing something else so it's just and we also we coalition with a lot of places. I'm on the Educators Roundtable, which is 31 museums and agencies in the area. And we work together to promote the Passport Program, which gives every student from K through sixth grade um, entry to all those museums for a parent and a child. And the parent component of that's really important for us. We've gotten so many, they come in and say thanks that you've included the parent. Because even if the child gets a free, which happens a lot, you can't get them there without the parent. Um, so we do that. We also. Um, the same thing that also if you see in the Sunday paper, we, we help put together those Sunday once a month big sheets that are the um, unplugged page. So there's a lot of things going on that we do. So if there's any other questions? Well, that's exactly the list. You couldn't have done better. <laughs> um, we, I know all of my fellow council members are constantly asked by people, what does the city do uh, for the youth of the community? And, and how are we attempting to try to prevent gang violence? And, uh, we do so many, many things, but I know that the library is actively involved in it, and I don't feel as though you've had as much credit as you deserve, particularly in the programs that involve not just the children, but their parents as well, because we've all come to realize that getting the parents involved actively in the raising of the kids is as important as any youth program that the kid might go to alone. And I know my own youth, uh, my sense of the adult world, came through reading books out of the library. And so I, I just want to say how much I appreciate what you guys do. I think you do a lot. You don't get recognition for it as much as I think you deserve, and that's why I ask you to go ahead and give the list. Thanks. Thank, thank you. Ms. Thank you. Well, mine was just a comment. I can wait until after people speak oh, if okay. you like. Thank you. Do you have a question, Mr. Horton? Uh, first of all, I thought I saw Chief Sanchez out there. I don't know if he's still here, Probably but in the back. maybe he could comment a little bit, but Sarah, you've um, initiated a lot of programs this summer, uh, this very summer, and I think there's hundreds of kids involved, and could you just touch on the what you're doing? Yeah. Yes, um, Mayor Bloom and Councilmember Horton, 
thanks to the city council giving us some additional funds we were ex able to expand city programming um, in some of the most needed neighborhoods of the city uh, at Franklin, Harding, and McKinley Elementary Schools, we expended, extended the half-day free summer drop-in program to a full day. Um, they also receive a free lunch from the CAC. Those kids are being taken all over town on excursions, down to the beach, down to the swimming pool, having movie nights and movie days, um, and just activities at their safe school site right there in their neighborhood that they can just drop in and be safe and hang with their friends. Um, that was very important. We also added the Ortega Welcome House when uh, Frank, uh, the Fun in the Sun program moved to Franklin. We decided to open up the Ortega <laughs> Welcome House because it was so close to so many of the housing authority facilities and homes that there were unmet needs for those children in those areas. So Ortega Welcome House is also open. What a perfect site at Ortega Park. They have a field, they have a swimming pool, and they have a safe environment right there. Um, and we're ha we have about 380 children participating in those programs. Um, that's how many are registered on a daily basis. It's probably between 250 and 300 kids that are coming on a daily basis. So we welcome anyone from the community to come and uh, participate in those programs. We also have started a handball league. Uh, we thought it was important to start one that both has it on the Franklin, it's at the Franklin Elementary School campus and at the Westside Boys and Girls Club. And those are held in the early evenings. They can call the Youth Activities Office for more information on that. That was kind of put together on a shoestring, but when we had the open house, 90 children came to Franklin and about 100 children came to the Westside Boys and Girls Club. So we hope to keep those kids playing they're going to learn the, the legitimate rules of handball. This, the <laughs> now, now. the uh, instructors are certified United States Handball Association certified instructors. So it, that kind of steps it up a notch. And then we'll end the summer with a, a tournament that we hope to have at the Santa Barbara YMCA, a neutral ground, plus also a three-sided wall tournament. At, if you know the elementary schools and at Westside, um, they just use one single backboard, and that's not the typical tradition of handball. We also sent uh, 12 kids down to a handball tournament in Venice that was selected from the, the top of these participants right now. So it's a very popular sport, and actually it's a popular sport for you know youth all the way through 22 and 23-year-olds. We, we get a lot of... Um, young adults playing it at the municipal tennis court, if you can believe that, on the backboards there. So it's really a very popular thing, and so we keep hoping to promote that further. Uh, also, uh, funding was added to the job apprentice program. We hired two previous job apprentices to become the coordinators for that program. We've contacted over 150 participants. Uh, that may have interest in it are interviewing them, giving them job skills, and have placed about 37 or so uh, youth so far. We will be trying to extend that more out into the community with other, using other businesses that are willing to hire youth that may be unskilled, give them an entry level position, give them a try. Um, it's always amazing to me how like as you said before they are so articulate and so smart and so willing and um, willing to learn that it, it I mean we all probably started as some entry-level position and it's really an opportunity of a lifetime so mirroring that those opportunities with the job apprentice skills that they will learn once a week um, we're very thankful to have that program kicked off and going on yeah it's very wonderful and if yes go ahead mr. house um, in our packet, we received this attachment one that is uh, like a table with the um, key action steps on the left-hand side and then in the center. Um, actually, could you just describe that? I think for people who are watching this, they wouldn't have a chance to see what it is that we're looking at because it goes on for page after page and divides the whole um, enterprise, if you will, up into three parts. And then address, uh, if you would, where does the city's interface with the uh, non-governmental organizations, the nonprofit world, which is 
um, vast in Santa Barbara in terms of what it's offering to young people, but what's our interface with them? How, how are we working to support them, and where do they fit into this kind of matrix? I'd be happy to answer that. To begin with, the document is on the web page. So anyone from the public that would like to view it, or they could come to a Park and Recreation office um, or contact me, and I would be happy to supply it. But it is set up so that um, the first column is the National League of Cities, either their part one or t part two, the infrastructure and the key action items. So that goes down the first column. Then in the middle, this is where the departments added their information about what their particular pro par department is doing to meet that particular task or idea. So that, as you can see, that's where it's filled in the most, is down the center, where we have met in many, many ways um, a key component or a, a key essential function that makes us a thriving, viable, family and youth-friendly uh, city. Then in the following, in the final column is where the unmet needs or uh, specific actions that departments may think of that they're planning to do or they know they should be moving towards that area or we see some type of a gap. That's one of the best things about the platform is that it helps illustrate where we may have gaps in service and that we can direct either our resources that we currently have or future resources to meet those gaps and to link that with the nonprofits and the other outside agencies, sometimes it's the outside agencies that just need a little assistance from the city to meet some of those gaps. Um, in Parks and Recreation, we do have a lot of partnerships with nonprofits and, and through co sponsorships and agreements. And so we very um, strategically try to marry, marry the city resources of having facilities and participants with a nonprofit's resources of a, a interesting and fun program to bring into one of our facilities. So it's a kind of a win-win. It expands the services that we have and it doesn't cost either of us anything. So we do look to that. We are very interested in expanding those services to the junior high after school program through partners. We hear from many different nonprofits that, gosh, we just wish we could get into the schools. And now we have seen a night and day change with the school district um, officials about wanting to keep kids on campus and that this might be a really important way to do it and an interesting way to um, enrich kids' lives but keep them safe and right in their neighborhood school site. Well, just one thing, I'll, I'll slip a comment in here. It seems like there's perhaps then two columns that could be added to this. And the one would be um, uh, available to nonprofits to fill in what they're doing in each of these areas. And the other column next to that might be where they see gaps in necessary oppor or opportunities. So it would be really uh, pretty cool to enrich this by including and broadening out to the larger community as well. Anyway, thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. We have several members of the public who would like to speak. Chris McDermott will be followed by Laura Inks. Thanks. Chris, you've been out in the sun this summer. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Madam Mayor and fellow members of the council. First of all, I'd like to say I hope you're all having a wonderful summer, as I am. I went surfing today. That's why I'm so colorful. But um, <laughs> Is there much surf out there, Chris? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah uh, there you good. go. <laughs> but I would just like to, again, on behalf of the Youth Council, say that we fully support you in um, passing this uh, document to make youth as a priority. And I'm excited to see it happen because it applies youth into every dynamic of the city and it's going to be awesome once we cement this document we can look at all the other towns and say we've got ours where's yours will be an inspiration mm -hmm. and i know whether or not i end up in santa barbara later on in life i will take everything i've learned here take everything i've learned doing community service and um i will apply it to the next town and santa barbara is a great role model and um it's a great document i've read it and Thanks, and I hope you're having a good meeting. And it's, um, and I'm just proud to be part of this city with such a great document to, you know, make youth a priority because we're the next generation. That's right. All right, okay. thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Laura Inks will be followed by Sheila Cushman. Thank you, Madam Mayor, Council Members. Um, I just want to say I'm really proud of the 
the youth uh, that have stepped up to leadership programs. But for every child, for every teen that's involved in a, in a youth leadership program, there are probably two or three kids out on the streets that aren't getting services because they won't show up for them. They won't go to the teen center. They act like they don't know about it. I've been in the continuation schools asking the kids why they don't go to the teen center. They say there's nothing for them there. So um, I've really been engaged in talking to teens, especially the ones on the fringes, the ones that are doing alternative street art, dance, music, graffiti art, um, trying to get a coalition of those students together to um, create programs for themselves. And so um, I just want to say that I appreciate all the members of council that support the work that I myself and some other um, agencies are doing. Collaboration is like the key word, the buzzword this year for um, all these different organizations, including the city. And um, I was at a meeting this morning at the um, Nonprofit Support Center and collaboration was in every action item that we came up with because it seems like um, we all want to collaborate, um, but sometimes we need help in knowing how to collaborate because we get together and we go, okay, well, you know, we can write this grant together, but then how do we divvy up the money when it comes in and who's actually going to do the programs? And so I think, you know, there needs to be some kind of education around how to collaborate. So I don't know if any of you has any ideas on that. I'm, my ears are wide open on that. Um, I did have a group of uh, students, teenagers, come to me about six months ago, and they wanted to have a graffiti art show in the Arts Alive Community Gallery. And so we do have one scheduled for um, January of 08, and um, working with students right now to, again, collaborate and decide what they want um, in in the show and I am working with the police department so that I can learn how to educate myself on gang symbols and things so that that's not included in part of the show because that's not we don't want to glorify any kind of gang activity but we do want to recognize these teens as artists and that graffiti is not just vandalism or tagging but there is an actual art style and you know to put my art educator hat on for a moment it comes out of you know, Germany after the war and, you know, the people wanting to say what they feel about their society. And so I think we have a, a growing number of teens here that want to say something, that have a lot to say, and sometimes they feel like they don't have any place to say it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, myself, I'm trying to hold the space for that. Um, I'd love to see a graffiti wall, an art wall in Santa Barbara. The kids want to have it down by the skate park. I don't know if it'll ever happen, but I'm just putting that bug in your ear right now because that's what I'm hearing from the teens at, you know, kind of the grassroots level. So um, just so you know, I'm also working with um, county probation and um, the gal from Affirm and um, the Renaissance Project. So these are all gang resistance programs. I'm learning a lot. I'm an art educator. I know how to put art tools in kids' hands and give them an opportunity to express themselves. But I'm learning that there's a lot I need to, to learn about the whole gang resistance program, and uh, I'm willing to do so in a collaborative effort. So thank you all for your support, and um, I just love being a part of the city. Thank well, you. thanks for stepping forward for the kids. You're doing a great job. Shayla Kushma will be followed by Michael Marzola. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor and Council Members. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm Sheila Cushman, Director of the Santa Barbara Children's Discovery Museum. Our board is in the process of developing plans for an interactive, dynamic facility for children and their families for all segments of the community. And we are 100% supportive of anything that would strengthen families and help children uh, of all ages. Um, we're thrilled that you would bring forth this resolution, and I particularly want to commend Roger Horton and the Youth and Children Committee for advancing this um, platform. So we're supportive. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Michael Marzolo will be followed by Pedro Paz. Hey, Michael. Madam Mayor, uh, members of the City Council, um, I also wanted to speak in favor of this uh, motion, in favor of youth. Uh, I'd like to also just add a little bit of history. I've been here sure. for a little while. I'm not a native Santa Barbarian, but. Uh, I lived here long enough to have been uh, served on the original youth task force about uh, 15 years ago. And we presented to the city council at that time a report that was a collaborative effort uh, amongst a group of young people and uh, 
people that work in youth work in this community. I, I, I'm actually a youth development advisor with the UC Cooperative Extension. I also run the Master Gardener program. That's my profession. It's also my passion. And uh, the one thing I'd like to suggest, too, with this effort, which I have to commend and thank you, uh, Councilman Horton, for carrying this forward with your uh, and I'm sure you had lots of able assistance, but I think this is really extremely valuable. But I think that also what I notice, and I, sit, I look around the room, there is a large segment of the community that is generally not, a, not even aware that this is going on. Right. And uh, I think that one thing needs to be done, and that is that there needs to be folks that represent the city that can speak with other segments of the community that are generally not represented and actually go out and meet with families and, and uh, young people and, and, and speak to them in their language about what this is all about. I think it's essential. I mean, I found out about it actually through a phone call. I didn't know what was going on, but I, I don't read the local paper much anymore. <laughs> and it, unfortunately, we've had some uh, communications breakdowns in this community lately, uh, and somehow, hopefully, we'll be able to restore those in some way. But uh, I really want to once again say that uh, please take a look at the old report, too, because I think you'll find there's a lot of good information in that. And uh, you may also want to think about establishing another youth task force to really dig deep into what can be done to improve what we're doing already and find out where those gaps are. And I think the whole idea of bringing in the other nonprofits and other organizations in the, in the process is essential, as well as just local grassroots organizations and helping foster grassroots groups, uh, community organizations, so they can become much more engaged in the community. And the other thing I would suggest, too, is uh, really building in a, a strong internship program for underrepresented members of this community within every level of uh, government. I think it's really essential to help build that leadership. I mean, I look around the room, too, and I, there's a lot of us in my, my age group that are in leadership positions. Most of them, I think, are not all male anymore. Used to be, it was all male, and mostly Anglo. And I think uh, we need to continue struggling to make sure that we have an organization that is truly a, de a democratic representation of this community. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you. Pedro Paz will be followed by Baba Chude Filiami. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor, members of the uh, Council. My name is Pedro Paz. I work for First Life Center of County as a program and evaluation manager. Uh, as you, many of you may know, First Life strives to improve the lives of children zero to five in our county um, by working with families, partners, other community organizations to build a support of uh, countywide and integrated and culturally relevant and sustainable systems of services. We fund many of the nonprofits. In fact, one of the nonprofits that just came up and spoke to you has a proposal in front of our commission as we speak. Um, I'm also currently aware that many of you are involved in many of the activities that we support, um, such as the downtown child care uh, group. Um, also, the meetings that you've been involved in and with the bankers and support of financing child care options in our community. Um, also, have make you aware that uh, both your city department of parks and recreation and the planning department have been really strong supporters of many of the activities that First Life Santa Barbara County is involved with. Um, we are also honored um, very highly to have uh, Councilmember Horton as part of our um, commission. And it's, uh, it's been a pleasure working with him and has brought to our attention many of the issues that affect children in Santa Barbara, the city of Santa Barbara. So I'm here to urge the council to consider um, supporting this platform of uh, youth education and families. Uh, stated in the draft resolution, the platform supports many of the items that First Life funds or is currently involved with, such as the effort to improve early care and learning opportunities for children by improving child care opportunities and preschool options for parents and, and their children. Um, also, the extending of literacy materials to homes of uh, family child care providers. Uh, it also proposes to provide more information to parents to, to um, give them the opportunities to make really choices on quality care and education for their children. Um, so I strongly urge you to support this um, resolution to pass this. Also notice that in your re redevelopment uh, plan as well, there is a discussion about child care options as well. So it's in many facets of the work that you do. 
Uh, so I strongly urge you to support this uh, on behalf of the children uh, in the county, zero to five. Thank you. Thank you. The opportunity for the Amy will be followed by Christina Gonzalez. Madam Mayor, uh, members of the council, it's a very happy day for me today to uh, to come here in support of this resolution in favor of our young people. I don't need to lecture you on it because I know uh, many of you work very hard to make it happen. Uh, I'm impressed with the, uh, the depth of it. It gives us a possibilities as a community to address a lot of different problems that are here. And this is the first step um, for the city to take a position. Uh, it puts everyone in the city on the same page. Uh, and now that will allow uh, street practitioners like myself to, uh, to get to work on making something happen. Thank you very much on behalf of the community and the young people. Thank you. Thank you. Christina Gonzalez will be followed by, I just have here, Wheelers. Good afternoon, um, Madam Mayor and Council Christina. Members. Um, I just would like to speak on behalf of Santa Barbara City Youth Council as well as ADAP, the Alcohol and Drug Prevention Team Coalition, um, and just um, strongly support this platform and resolution. Um, I just want to thank you for all the work that you've done and the support that you've given us on the Teen Center. Um, there has been so many kids who's, who have worked on the Teen Center from um, every socioeconomic background you can think of, um, you know, 20 years in the making. And so I would just like to thank you and encourage you to support this um, platform and um, to encourage you to make it um, a reminder to keep youth, um, you know, kind of in your mind when you're making decisions for the city um, because we are going to be living here in the future. Um, and we are the future generation who will, um, will be living in the city and the laws that you make and the decisions that, that you do um, put forth. So I would just like to thank you for everything that you've done and um, encourage you to pass this resolution. And thank you again. Thank you. Wheelers? Ah, Miss Wheeler. Followed by Bill, Bill Batty will be the last speaker. Madam Mayor, members of City Council, uh, I'm speaking actually on behalf of another Wheeler who's sitting in back, Christian Wheeler, who just did not want to come up and speak in front of the Council today. But um, we came because he has a kind of dynamic sports idea and was very affected. Obviously, he's in Santa Barbara High School by the stabbings and the gang violence that's occurring and actually knew one of the boys that did die. And he has an idea of kind of weaving the community with the police and um, sports teams and the gangs together and really didn't know who to go to and so came here to try and get some suggestions of who he might talk to in terms of perhaps implementing or at least talking about implementing the idea that he has. It's on a high school level and um, so anyone that you could I, I thought maybe this well, would be you've, okay. got, you've got two choices here, but, that would be but you could do both. But uh, Sarah Hannah right there is helping us out, uh, doing some good work for the police and police for the parks and recreation. And then our uh, youth council is, is really dynamic, but they're, they're, they work with Susan um, Young with the, um, of the parks and recreation department. She's hiding it in the back right there <laughs> behind Christina. Okay. But uh, both are dynamic working with kids. So and their ideas, and we love kids with ideas yeah, and, and opinions, so that's good. It's a, it's a dynamic idea. Good. Okay, thank you. Bill Batty will be the last speaker. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor and members of the Council. Um, certainly, Family Service Agency would support the adoption of this plan. Our mission is to strengthen and advocate for families, so we do endorse and support the plan and give you credit uh, for your efforts to be proactive. Certainly thank Councilmember House for the recognition of the CBOs. I know all of you work on behalf of the CBOs and the city supports through its human service funding the nonprofit community. 
Um, Family Service Agency actually provides counseling in the elementary schools all the way through the high school grades, and that's referenced the, the partnership with the schools in your document. We also staff the Family Resource Centers, and along with us, there's the Council on Alcoholism, there's COM, there's Community Action Commission. So we are partners with you. We link arms every day with your staff at Parks and Rec. And I just encourage continued dialogue proactively. I'd just like to suggest at least two opportunities that are immediate uh, based on the discussion this afternoon. One is that I think our agency and others can provide, we can facilitate dialogue with your staff, in particular Michael's uh, comments about the bilingual, com the Spanish speaking community. We have bilingual bicultural staff in our family resource centers that can in fact, link you with parents and youth who'd be willing to share their perspective. In fact, recently we had a mom who wanted to talk about her anxieties and the fact that she's trying to find a way to support her son who's 10 years old and she's concerned about him going in the wrong direction. And then there's an opportunity for all of us in this community, in this county, for funding in the next year. Prop 63, which is the tax on a million dollar incomes, there's going to be another wave of support, of funding coming out of that act. And there's two uh, funding areas that are highlighted by the state of California. One is services for children at risk in stressed families. And the second one is children at risk of school failure. So working with county mental health, I hope that we can have a dialogue sooner rather than later so we can maybe plan a collaborative grant um, and be competitive in the bidding for these funds at the state level and also through the county department of mental health. That's a Thanks good very idea. much. Thank you very much. Bill, before you go, yeah, just uh, can Mr. you put Williams. out your phone number yep. um, on TV here? So, uh, so if you're a parent, okay. if you're you're out there and you're a parent uh, that's wondering what to do with a, your your child if they're at risk, that they have some place to go. So can't please, they please dial two one one? You can call two one one, which um, we, we operate the call center at two one one. You can also call 965-1001. Thank you. 1001, okay. Thanks. That's easy, that's the 101, but with an extra zero. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have no more speaker slips, but we have some people up here who would like to speak. Um, Ms. Uh, uh, Schneider, please. Okay, thank you. Sure. Well, thank you everyone for, for being here, and I hope this is the beginning of a continued dialogue and, and uh, to challenge us when we have a piece of paper here that calls for action and to make sure that that action really occurs. I think what's really strong about this document and the youth platform is there's strong commitment in, in, in words, but then it, it's connected to deeds and actions. And it's also connected to measurements for progress. And we need to make sure we remain accountable to that. So I was very pleased to hear how dynamic and, and it's supposed to be a living, breathing document, um, so it's not static. Uh, because things change over time, new ideas come around, and I really hope that we have a very strong uh, communication link with the Youth Council in terms of how we keep that, how we keep this platform breathing alive and well. Um, so I, it was, I, I didn't expect that before I saw the, the document and was very pleased to see that it wasn't just a bunch of words, there was, you know, commitment and action behind it, and that's really that's important. Ms. Inks was talking about collaboration and how to do it, and I don't particularly have any answers, but I, I have learned in the last few years how any real challenging social concern and issue or safety issue so much requires collaboration and how to do it. And it's actually a, a radical notion, I think, because we're, uh, from what I can tell and, and have learned over the last few years, everyone likes to be in places where they're comfortable, where they're people of like-minded thoughts and minds and experiences and it's only when we branch out to other organizations that might have different ideas or different approaches that things work and we change and for the better and improve and to collaborate is going to also mean that the kind of uh, um, experiences that we have, but also the resources we have, we're going to have to share with others. And that can be very scary. And it, so that's why I say it's a radical notion. But whether it's about youth programs or reducing violence in our community or disaster preparedness or homelessness concerns, so much of that has to do with collaboration of efforts, because otherwise we're just spinning our wheels and running to standstill. So um, this, again, uh, I, I um, I agree with Councilmember House that there's not just the city piece in here, but that also connection connection with the school district and, and the uh, community-based organizations to do as much as we can. So I, I see this as a, as a new chapter. We, we've, uh, I think the city has 
continued for a very long time to have a number of great programs and I'm really pleased that our council was able to put in significant new funding for great pro and for new programs that we just heard some uh, earlier today but we need to continue and, and I look forward to monitoring that and making sure we we uh, live up to the words that are right here today so I'll certainly be supporting this platform okay. thank you Ms. Falcone oh, thank you very much um, I, I would like to first uh, commend the uh, the youth task force. The what is it? The um, the uh, community, the committee for youth and children, in, in our uh, in our community, and uh, and Roger Horton for being its chair and its uh, its its founder. Really, I mean, it was your idea to bring this because the city council uh, and the city jurisdiction doesn't generally deal with the we don't have health department we don't run the schools and so the issue of youth and children although I know former mayor Harriet Miller has always been incredibly committed to making sure our youth got the services that they need and we have park and recreation that goes above and beyond the call to do that we never really had a site in the city where these concerns could be focused and this was really Rogers uh, Rogers baby and I want to I want to thank him for that I also want to um, say that it's not just the schools and the and the city now and and the other juris it's the other jurisdictions we have to look at when we're talking about the youth of our community it's really the youth of our region uh, Santa Barbara City is not the only place where we have kids going in the wrong direction and violence in the wrong direction we have a whole host of things happening in the unincorporated area of the south coast in the city of Goleta in the city of Carpinteria and this is uh, partly why a number of years ago uh, we recreated the regional recreation task force which I have chaired and, and helped to recreate in the past Mayor, uh, Mayor Bloom sits on that uh, with us and representatives from the county and the other cities along with members from a lot of the youth organizations like Page Youth Center, we UCSB, the parks, uh, Ivy Parks and Recreation. So I think this is a fabulous um, step to take in the city. It, it gives us a real focus on youth as our number one priority and public safety, of course, but youth really is and should be our number one going concern and how do we make sure that they have the resources and the information that they need to really connect with the myriad I mean hundreds of resources in the area exist and that's why one of the first conversations we had at the regional task force was well how do we make sure that everybody knows where to go to contact and then uh, 211 came along thanks to Bill Batty and his uh, great family service agency and the notion of expanding that has been broached a number of times and I think that this is it's 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 past due I know it's we had to let it get up and running and sort of sufficient and I think we need to really continue to build on that because it's a simple easy way for people to connect into services and recreational opportunities of all kind with all the nonprofits with all the jurisdictions and so forth so I'd like to see that continue another thing that I really want to stress is that out in the community and out in the neighborhoods the most prevalent thing that I have heard from the parents both the moms and the dads is that they would like very much to see opportunities for their kids to have jobs for their kids to learn skills it's all well and good to have recreational opportunities but really the rubber meets the road when it comes to apprenticeship programs job training programs and I want to commend although he's not seeking recognition Walter Claudio who phoned me a few days after the first death uh, in this in this new era that we have um, of gang violence and taught wanted to build an apprentice program go around to the various different 
entrepreneurs and, and people who own businesses and so forth and get kids hooked in to learn skills and have jobs. Since then, I know Ginny Dreyer has become very, very involved and uh, I just got a note from the Santa Barbara Sales Center. They want to bring kids in. There are all these various different businesses out there and I think now it's being coordinated through PAL, the Police Activities League. And uh, so I think that that is a huge area that we need to focus on. This is a tremendous program. I know a lot of us have been involved with the League of California Cities for a long time. I'm sorry, not California Cities. That's the National League of Cities, which is all of us. I think a lot of us are going to New Orleans this, uh, this November. So we can take this message back to the National League of Cities and their leadership and tell them what a great program we think it is and have them help us in learning how to expand on it as well. So again, I want to I want to give kudos to my longtime colleague and friend for a job well done. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bernwell. Thanks, Madam Mayor. I'll, 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 I'll hail the, uh, the work that's been done here. Um, I, one of the things I noticed when I was reading this a couple of nights ago, this attachment that we got here uh, as the council, is there are three columns. One of them is the item itself. The middle column is things we are doing now, and then the third column is things we plan to do. And I think everybody should see how the middle column is packed with things we are doing now. The, the right-hand column has pages of blanks because we're already doing many, many of the things that we needed to do. And I think kudos are goes out to everyone for already having these things implemented in Parks and Rec and in the library and through PAL and everything. Um, I also want to thank uh, Laura Inks for coming here and talking about Arts Alive and representing what I think Mr. House is right on the mark with talking about, which is everything that all the nonprofits are doing to achieve these same goals. Uh, if you read the uh, editorial page of the uh, Santa Barbara News Press, you would not know that the city of Santa Barbara or this council was doing a single thing in support of youth in the community. If you listen to today's uh, council meeting, you know that indeed not only are we doing it now, but we have been doing it for a long time and we will even do more. And I want to also say again, it's going to get kind of sappy here before it's all done, but I think mm -hmm. Mr. Horton has done an outstanding job. He has been a leader mm -hmm. in youth activities and and everything associated with the, our youth program and he deserves a lot of kudos and for bringing it into this formalized document yeah. as we all know <clears throat> the way government works is you reference your documents and then from those documents you make your decisions and it without documents you're kind of just shooting in the dark and now we have this wonderful document that all of us will be able, be able to turn back to as we make our official decisions and say we're going to do it based on this. So thanks to everybody. Um, I'm looking forward to implementing it. And thanks to uh, uh, Baba Tunde, who I just mentioned to um, Ms. Schneider, is one of the coolest dudes on the planet <laughs> and a very hard worker in the streets for youth. And he deserves an awful lot of credit, too, for being a soldier. Thank you very much, Madam okay, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Williams? And then well, I also want to thank uh, staff and, and Councilmember Horton for uh, bringing this to us in this form. Uh, I serve on the count on the City Council Committee on, on Youth and Children, along with uh, Mayor Bloom and Councilmember Horton, uh, who chairs it. And I, we, I felt that this form was good because it both articulated that uh, youth were our number one priority, but then substantiated it mm -hmm. uh, at the same, really in the same document. And it doesn't mean that, that, that housing or the environment or public safety is less important. It's just that when we're talking about all of these things, uh, we're hopefully, at least in my mind, more concerned with pr protecting the environment for our children than we are just for ourselves. And that we're concerned with public safety for our children even more than ourselves uh, and, and uh, housing or uh, other needs for our children even more than our, ourselves. Uh, and uh, the I, th I think that one of the reasons why the middle column is, is full and, and, the, and the right column isn't as full is because all, some of the ideas haven't yet come up um, into our minds yet. And that one of the, the value of this document is uh, to look at it and see what we're doing, but also 
uh, when you're looking at a map, it's easier to see what um, you know what you're not doing or where you're, what still needs to be done. And I, I think, in particular, some of the thing, one of the things that keeps on recurring to me is that we have tons and tons of, of opportunities for children, um, and maybe not as many ways to uh, interact uh, and bring in parents in a way that also gets in their children. And so I, I think if there's anything that, in looking at this document, stands out to me that we still have yet to, to really do as a community, despite such programs as, uh, as the Family Service Agency or Future Leaders of America or New Beginnings, which all have uh, parent programs. Again, if you're watching on TV and you're one of those parents, look up one of those organizations. But uh, that we need to keep on exploring ways to do that because, uh, as Laura Inks rightly pointed out, we don't always get some of the at-risk kids in coming through the door. And one of those ways we need to do that is to interact with their parents. Okay. Thank you. Mr. House? Um, thank you very much and, and I, uh, for um, working on this and bringing it forward. And Mr. Horton, thank you for your leadership in this and the others that have worked with you. And I would really put um, some attention on our Youth Council and their leadership as well. They've been calling for this kind of thing. They also have other things in their agenda and things they'd like to see us do in the future too. And I think we should continue to listen and to really make a um, work harder on having our link um, between us and them um, be uh, strengthened because one of the key pieces of this was the voice part, the youth having a voice part. And um, so wherever we have that opportunity, we should be taking it and, and um, learning to respect that kind of input more and more. Uh, I really appreciate the emphasis on strengthening families. Uh, it wasn't that long ago, I mean, we're talking maybe about two or three months ago that um, there were some um, notes and ideas circulating um, over at La Casa de la Raza and through associated organizations that were um, really putting that out as probably the, the number one uh, thing uh, that could really make a difference with regards to assisting youth, and that is to get up underneath and support their families. Um, do what can be done to parenting skills, even going all the way back to the prenatal care and that kind of thing. Really building healthy families is a key component of this. And um, so I think we're, we're definitely on the right track, and it builds and puts resilience into a community that um, is not going to, it's not going to just be all sweetness and wonderful, sugary, everything's great after today, just because the city council had this conversation. I mean, we've got, there's stuff brewing out there, and most of us know that that's happening, and we need to uh, be ready to take it on as a whole community. Um, I'm going to share, just share with you real quickly just one little thing. I, I, was, I was playing jump rope with a bunch of kids in the Fun in the Sun program over at Franklin School the other day. They invited us to come over and different, um, different businesses will go over at lunch and play with the kids and have a presence with them, but they get reading skills and things they wouldn't otherwise get. These are underprivileged kids that typically don't see the uh, kinds of advantages that some of those who maybe go to private schools and things might. And, um, and we had such a great time, and the kids just smiled on their faces, and the counselors, and everybody was there. It was just so cool. And afterwards, somebody came over and wanted to take a picture, and so the city council person was there, and the little kids that had played jump rope were all together, and the counselor. And, and the little boys in front of me automatically rose their hands in little gang signs kind of thing, like that's what you should do. You're going to get your picture taken. And I said, no, no, don't, don't do that, you know, to the little boy. And he put his hands down. The council said, we don't do that here. And just kind of, you know, put the, and the boys kind of put the, they didn't know quite what to do with their hands. And these are little kids. And I'm thinking, this is deep. Mm -hmm. You know, this is deep stuff. And so we've got, you know, the big middle column filled up with programs and solutions and ideas and we need to increase access and stuff. But there are some unmet needs that have not yet been articulated well and we really have a lot of work to do. And I know that we're going to, the police department's really rallying to try to make this a safe fiesta and we've got all these tensions and pulls back and forth, east side, west side, all that stuff. So. Uh, my heart goes out to all the community and I'm really hopeful that we rally, not just like what we say today, but we do the, the that deeper work and get in there. I also want to say one last piece, and that is that to make these organizations that are associated with helping youth be successful in their lives and their families, they need funding. They need money. The city of Santa Barbara just recently um, went um, extra mile, I think, in taking uh, residual funds that we had and really appropriating those directly to uh, youth 
and, and things that will benefit them, arts, things that can actually connect directly with them and help them. And we've done that in our budget, the moral document that it is. Thank you very much for saying that, Mr. Williams. It is a moral document, and we've been directing more and more funds in that direction. But we need the community as a whole to really rise up to this challenge. And the, um, the businesses and individuals who are of means, please contribute, please participate, please give to the nonprofit organizations. They need it to be able to do this work, need it more than you know. Anyway, I certainly support this, and whoever makes the motion has my second. We're going to let Mr. Horton make the motion. Mr. Horton? You might have some comments, too. I have a couple comments. <laughs> um, first of all, uh, I really want to express my gratitude for um, our city administrator and um, bearing with me on this one. It's taken, uh, I guess, most of our careers here at the city in one form or another, because he started a little bit before me, but not long. And then um, certainly uh, Nancy and Sarah and Susan um, from the Parks and Rec Department have been wonderful uh, to work with along the way. And, and my old buddy Bob Atunde, uh, we talk from time to time, and I know this has been a big thing for him. And uh, I guess what I really wanted, and one of my journalistic buddies in the, in the community said, is this just a feel-good day today? And I said, well, yeah, it's partially that. <laughs> but uh, what I really think it is is a... Um, is a is a well built strong foundation, and to to take this uh, anywhere in the future, you have to have that kind of a foundation. We, we just went through a building thing last night, and that analogy came to my mind that that this is a um, one of the strongest foundations we could have. Um, I've, I've been talking with Sarah and Nancy, and I think that we are, are not only ahead of the general plan, but I believe we're ahead of uh, of the seventy or so cities. I don't think anyone has such a complete and thorough plan, and I believe that this will be a model plan in the entire United, United States for this kind of activity. And just to kind of reiterate what I think it does is I think it brings focus uh, to the needs of families and children in the community, which is, which is necessary. I think it puts a priority on that in terms of, this, of the city's um, structure. And I think that finally it... Um, when we get to the, to the difficult budget times, which we have had in the past and will have in the future, it gives us a starting place when we look at all the needs of this city, from from police and fire to, to street repair, that this is one that we need to think of at the very beginning. So th that's what I think this plan does in, in response to my journalistic friend, who shall remain nameless. But um, the other thing that uh, that came up was, um, was the collaboration. And that really is where we need to go from here. Uh, we have the uh, the boys and girls clubs, the Boy Scouts, the the uh, the Ys, the service clubs, the social services agencies, and all those different things in our community that were. And and, and one thing that I really uh, have in the back of my mind and hope for the future here in the next few years on this is that we in the city can help um, devise a a, uh, a blueprint, construction plan, or roadmap, whatever you want to call it to tie these resources together in a way they've never been tied before so that we can bring um, a far greater package of resources to trying to answer the needs of youth and families than we've been able to uh, in the past. And that's really what I hope. So having said that, I'd like to move recommendations A and B. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. I want to, oh. <laughs> want to make sure we thank, Ms. Bob, um, thank uh, Mr. Horton because he's really worked hard on this and before him it was Baba Tunde here on the council who, who championed the youth. And, and, you know, I think we raise some very wonderful children around here, very strong children, and we want to continue to do that. And it, it's up to neighbors and, and families and everybody helping out. But it's you know, we're doing a really good job around here. And when you see that inventory, you really know what we're doing. So that's very good. Um, I just saw an article on, in the Washington Post this last week I've shared with a couple of you that uh, New York City about 20 years ago took one, um, the way they handled their gang activity, which was getting out of hand, uh, is they set up some programs for youth. They set up some things that youth can do and, uh, and started paying attention to what, uh, what was bothering the youth, but, but in getting them in one-on-one -on -one types of things. They did social programs. Um, at the same time, L.A. tended to do the uh, get uh, um, become strict with youth uh, having to do through police enforcement. So those are two separate things, and I think those two 
populations are probably pretty comparable. And what happened was this last year in 2006, um, New York City had about 250 something gang uh, incidents, whereas LA had over 5,000. And that to me is just really telling. And we can do the enforcement. Cam Sanchez, our, our police chief, does a really good job, and he's working hard on enforcement. But we have to have all these other programs, and we have to reach out to, to these youth one-on-one -on -one and and, and um, make sure that they get involved and, and see a future for themselves. That's really what we want them to do. So, so I am tickled, too, about this. <laughs> and um, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Thanks to everybody for this. We'll take a real short break.
nominate Landon Newstep. Okay. Second. Okay. And do we have any other nominations? Move by acclamation. Okay. Second. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That was easy. Okay. Thank you. Item number 19. Item number 19, response to the report of the 2006-2007 Santa Barbara County Civil Grand Jury entitled Representation in Local Government, Why and How It Should Be Improved. Okay. Uh, we have various parts of the grand jury report that we need to answer, and this, uh, this one is about representation in local government. And we took the findings and answered them, and then the, um, the recommendations also. They had a couple recommendations there. Um, and so... Each of you have a copy of what of our answer. Do you have anything that you'd like to add or subtract or anything you'd like to say about it? Um, Mr. House. I'm uh, also noticing there's no one here from the public yet to, who would be speaking on this, and just to say that. Don't see anybody um, yet. I, Thanks. I read this very carefully, and I concur with uh, these, um, this um, response, and I move that we um, accept this response and send it on. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Well, both Mr. House and Ms. Ms. Falcone uh, helped with this, and I appreciate their help in reading and reviewing this and, and giving me some ideas. And um, let's go ahead and vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, very good. Thanks. Um, and that will go out as soon as I can get it done, probably tomorrow. Item, let's see. Council member committee assignment reports. Um, Ms. Schneider. Thank you. Uh, a few things, three things. <laughs> the South Coast Homeless Advisory Committee requested a couple of months ago to the county um, CEO and the Human Resources Department to participate in the upcoming recruitment of the new Alcohol, Drug, and Mental Health Services Director. And uh, in fact, we will be having an official representat representative from that committee to participate in the uh, screening and interview panels of that, which I thought was really mm -hmm. um, great in that the issues surrounding homelessness and mental illness and alcohol and drug um, concerns can be addressed by through the committee and, and right into the process with the uh, with the in, during the recruitment process. I also had a phone conversation with the outside um, recruitment consultant who is working on this particular one. So there's a lot of coordination, as we all know, between the city and the county on that important issue. So I thought that was um, that was good from our. Uh, advisory committee. Uh, last Saturday it was really fun to, and I want to commend Bill Sims uh, from being really being the leader of the Lincoln School dedication and if uh, there were, I don't know, 70 or so, 60, 70, uh, mostly mm -hmm. uh, alum from Lincoln School from back back in the day I guess when it, Lincoln School used to be on Coda Street between uh, between Anna Kappa and Santa Barbara Street and right now where the farmers market Saturday farmers market is and on Coda Street there's that little bus shelter which now there's these three beautiful beautifully painted tiles uh, explaining the history of of both the very original Lincoln School and then it was destroyed with the earthquake and then a new one and or yeah, and and mm -hmm. uh, the history of it so it was great to have that dedication that was a lot of fun um, on a more serious note uh, next Monday uh, Parks and Rec and our police department are responding to a request from the most recent Lower West Side Advisory Committee uh, members who have asked for some form of meeting at the community center um, to talk about neighborhood concerns at the Lower West Side and uh, also to introduce uh, Jessica Paritis who is the Lower West Side um, Center coordinator there which as you may remember we boosted her position from half time to three quarter time in this budget to introduce her to the neighborhood and also to talk about the focus of the meeting is also going to be talking about how parents can become more involved with family issues with interacting with the city in terms of creating a safer neighborhood and, and knowing what's going on at the community center so um, I'm pleased that that is that is happening coming from our from our membership from those from that advisory committee and that's happening um, next Monday evening and I also want to express my gratitude to the staff who very quickly turned around and put this program together um, which I think was very appropriate to do so so thank you okay thank you um, mr. Barnwell Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah. I just wanted to give everybody an update on our uh, Central Coast Water Authority, our relationship to that group. And 
Um, some of you may have been reading in the newspaper about the governor's plans for a peripheral canal. Um, I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a thumbnail sketch, but I, I was working with Mr. Mack, who's unfortunately going to be leaving us. But we were going to we were going to put together a program so that you could all understand the troubles associated with that source of water, which is a, a vital part of our own calculations of how much water we have. Um, but it had it had to do with um, the Delta smelt, which is a very small little fish, being sucked into the pump machines for the Central Coast Water Authority. And an environmental group asking for a kind of a cease and desist order because the smelt were uh, being destroyed in that process. And so for nine days, they stopped the pumps and they drew the water from a reservoir, uh, which drew down two thirds of its capacity, the, the San, San Benito, I believe it's the San Benito Reservoir. It drew down two thirds of the of the volume of the lake in just nine days. So it it's a very graphic representation of how dependent we are upon that water source, and and how fragile it is. So I want to put together a little uh, slideshow for you guys so you can understand what that's all about and see the costs associated with it, or the environmental documents that'll be required, and then the changes we're going to have to make if we want to ensure that water in our future. Um, and I, some other comments were already made by Ms. Schneider, so I don't need to make them again. So thank you, Madam Mayor. Okay, Ms. Falcone. Well, thank you, Madam Mayor. And, uh, this has been a fun meeting, but one should expect no less the week of fiesta, right? That's why we all look this way in case this is replayed at some later date and people wonder why on earth we're looking this way. I spent most of my week uh, in Monterey where the mayor and council division of which I'm the board representative meets every year uh, in Monterey and also the board of directors uh, takes that opportunity to meet as well. Um, I had the honor of uh, moderating a session called Art in Public Places which is something you know we in Santa Barbara know absolutely nothing about, right? So um, it was it was a very uh, enlightening conversation by a couple of experts, and I came away with two in particular possibilities for uh, a, a dedicated funding stream, and I, I hope to bring those uh, to this to this group sometime in the not too distant future, just for conversation. Um, I also spent quite a bit of time serving on the nominating committee for the board and the second vice president, and I'm very pleased about the decisions that we made. I think they'll forward the organization in a tremendous way. There's, um, there was a, a vote by the board to reorganize the Helen Putnam Award uh, world. It had become diluted and sort of unwieldy, and so the board uh, a committee of the board and then the board voted to award only one award per category to limit the applications per city to one per year, but to give certificates of participation to all of the folks who made application, which actually cuts into our uh, world a little bit because we often win multiple awards at the Helen Putnam every year, but uh, it, they decided to cut back on it, and it seems like a good idea. I do want to go into a little detail about a presentation that we heard on SB uh, 375, which is carried by Assemblymember Steinberg, and it's entitled Climate Change Transportation Planning Land Use. And we heard and had a great dialogue with the Executive Director of the League of Conservation Voters, Tom Adams. The purpose of the bill is to promote greater housing choice and shorten commutes, reduce greenhouse gas emissions and air pollution, reduce fossil fuel consumption, and conser conserve more farmlands and habitats. Now, everyone agrees with those goals. Nobody can quibble with them, and we're all working very hard in the city of Santa Barbara in particular to try to achieve uh, a lot of those goals. One of the problems, however, with it is that it allocates uh, land use control pretty much to the COGS and to the CACs, which takes it out of local land use authority to a great extent. It wants to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by controlling growth in, a ve in vehicle miles 
by allowing the metropolitan planning organizations, which we don't have here in this neck of the woods, but I guess our closest thing would be SBCAG, um, to develop and implement preferred growth scenarios uh, in regional transportation plans and to tie and allocate transportation funds like 1B to, uh, the, to these preferred growth <coughs> scenarios. So we had a vigorous and honest dialogue with Mr. Adams, who was gracious enough to come, and we have a great relationship with the League of Conservation Voters and the Sierra Club and a whole host of folks over the last several years in the collaborative efforts that we have been doing uh, on against Prop 90 and Yes on 1A and all of those sorts of things. Um, many concerns expressed by the board uh, Many concerns were expressed by the board. They were sort of all over the place to, you know, outright opposition to, well, let's take a softer tact and really see if we can get somewhere on this. So we ended up moving enthu to enthusiastically work in good faith with both the author and the proponents of, of this bill, which has fundamental effects on local government. Uh, and retaining local control is fundamental to the tenets of the League, and the Board takes it very seriously. One point of agreement, though, which was very interesting, was that the RENA process, the state-imposed housing mandates process, needs serious overhaul and possibly elimination. And Mr. Adams was one of the ones who actually made that comment, which was music to all of our ears. Another issue was that CEQA reform in some way, not quite sure how, what that looks like yet, is possible. And we are encouraging this to become a two-year bill so that we can really all roll up our sleeves and, and dig in our heels and, and make some meaningful uh, adjustments. Um, everyone agrees with the goals of exceeding uh, SB 32, which requires the California Air Resources Board to reduce the greenhouse gases by 25 percent by 2020 uh, or back to 1990 levels. The, the goals and the, and the uh, purposes and where we're trying to go with all of this, there's absolutely no disagreement on by anybody in the room or any of the, of the proponents or the, the objectors. What we need to do is get to a place where we can all live uh, happily together, I suppose, and, and to really allow us to retain local control while trying to also achieve some of these, uh, some of these goals of, re of reducing greenhouse gases, particularly through the car emissions due to, um, due to commuting, which we all know a lot about, but it's, it's much less of a factor here than it is in some areas like the Bay Area is really unbelievable. So we all want to get to the same place. It's a matter of how. So thank you for indulging me in that time. But I think people are going to start hearing a little bit more about this, especially if it doesn't become a two-year bill. And I thought it would behoove everyone to be up to speed, at least currently. Okay, Mr. Williams. Well, uh, uh, last Monday was a meeting of the Kachuma Operations Management Board. And uh, we actually got to see pieces of the South Coast conduit that were re repaired uh, earlier when I informed you that we were running out of water at L Loro because we were having to backfill um, at one of the very high points of the, of the summer with all Loro water because the South Coast conduit was shut off, meaning for those of you that don't know the South Coast conduit, that's how we get our, our water from Kachuma. And um, I wanted to indicate this, especially for our, our friend uh, Salud Carbajal, who did not believe me last year that this was a, a, an issue. I want to take a piece of that conduit and I want to bring it to, to, to Salud's office because it physically has cracks in it, okay? Um, meaning that the only reason why, um, uh, in, that the only thing protecting that section of the South Coast conduit was concrete. And concrete, as engineers know, do n is not sufficient to um, take the pressure um, of uh, a high degree of water moving through the si through the system. And so, uh, uh, I, I would I wanted to grab the the, the piece of, um, of metal. It was just about this big um, to bring and show you guys. But I'll I'll try to do that another time because there was physical holes in it. Um, the uh, last week also had a meeting of the Parks Department. 
I think Sarah went over a lot of the things uh, that they updated the Parks and Rec Commission um, about last week, which is sort of about the implementation of a number of the programs that we authorized higher funding for as part of our strategy um, to do with youth violence. Uh, those uh, pre That presentation um, uh, by uh, Parks Department staff was well received by the Commission. And uh, on Thursday, um, I uh, represented this city um, uh, in uh, announcing the return of the Amgen Tour uh, to Santa Barbara. Okay. We will Thank be a, a, a start once again. Uh, and that's, uh, I think, important not just for tourism. It's, you know, tourists, tourism is, is uh, you know, an economic generator, and, and that's important, but it's also just good for our soul to have a bike race here in town um, because I think it's a great way to get young people into alternative transportation. Uh, it's a sporting event uh, and one of this kind of magnitude really is a good way to, to do that. And, uh, you know, because uh, uh, because the letter, uh, I did w want to just give you my comments on the on the letter having to do with, uh, with governance. Uh, Madam Mayor, I thought your responses were were very, very good. I hope that uh, uh, that we do continue to have a dialogue about the concept of a of a hybrid system. I've seen, I've interacted through the League of Cities. I've interacted with uh, uh, representative council members from other cities in the nation that do have hybrid systems, meaning both at large and district elected council members, and uh, they serve very different functions, but. Uh, it, uh, in my opinion, it seems to work in a very fascinating way where uh, the district elected council members tend to do more of the community, um, uh, the, the, the constituent service work, and the at-large representatives do more of the policy work. And it, it seems to work very well for those cities that are doing it, um, you know, and I, I think it's something that we eventually should have a, a larger conversation about. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Horton. Uh, this is the time of year when our uh, sister city, Puerto Vallarta, arrives. Mm -hmm. And uh, Saturday night was um, El Fandango, and I represented the mayor there and gave some remarks from the city. And I think the mayor met the group um, mm -hmm. here today. today. Uh -huh. And uh, they're off um, shopping, learning about American <laughs> um, retail activities, I think, today. And uh, they seem to be having a great time. That's good. Thank you for doing that, both of you, for helping. Uh, we received two awards that I wanted to cover today. And then one other thing, um, at Sister City International in the summertime, they have um, they always have a, a, an annual meeting, and they had one in Florida this last week, and we won an, annual, uh, an award, and it's a big deal because there's a lot of cities that do Sister City things. But we won it for, and they gave me a program so I could see what it was, but we won it for art, uh, innovations in arts and culture. And uh, um, I, we had taken the Imadanari painters to, chalk drawers to um, Toba, Japan a couple years ago. And we took them this last November to uh, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. And so because of, I mean, that's pretty interesting, you know, things uh, drawing on, on chalk, a chalk on, on pavement, and they had never seen it, either Japan or Mexico, so that was fun. A year from this spring, we'll be taking, and next spring, we'll be taking it to uh, Weihai, China, but we won an award for that, and I think that was, that was nice that they recognized that. And then last night, unbeknownst to any of us, <laughs> just total surprise. We went to the Contractors Association dinner. That was not the surprise because we knew the dinner was coming. Uh, they have their Contractor of the Year awards, and the president gets to choose who he wants to give an award to, and he gave an award to the city of Santa Barbara, and this is the award. It's a very neat one, I think, and I'll, I'll, we'll put it in a prominent place. Um, and the I'll, I'll read off of it. It says, for your commitment and efforts in preserving Santa Barbara's environment and supporting the built green Santa Barbara. And I, of course we support it, but I kind of laugh because they come to us and ask us if they can do um, write a whole new green code, and we said, sure. 
And so we get the award. I thought that was pretty <laughs> Then they did all the work, and now they're voluntarily working, doing built green, and, and their green building stuff has just taken off. It's really wonderful. So that was nice of them to recognize that we were allowing them to do that. But Ms. Schneider? Well, also just to acknowledge George Estrella, who George also Estrella, received absolutely. his own reward um, from the president, and really That's it's right. due to him and, and the community development department that made it happen. And we obviously set the policy, but they make it That's happen. Right. So. I just want to acknowledge George as well. Thank you. Thanks for reminding me. And we do trainings together, and, and yeah, he's got a real can-do attitude, so that's what that is. And then the third thing is that um, I will be heading the task force, the sustainability task force for the Conference of Mayors this next two years. So I'm kind of excited about it. Yeah, it's because of all our sustainability work, but if there's anything that you want to take to the Conference of Mayors, or, I mean, I get to be in charge of the agenda, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> no, but if there's any, anything you know that we're doing around here, and we're doing so much, it's hard to pick anything, we can put it on their agenda. They meet in January in Washington, D.C., and then in June all around the country. But anyway, that I was pleased to be able to do that, so it's good. Um, Madam Mayor, I'd like to... I, I'm I'm taking a couple of shots here, and I just can't hold myself back. But uh -oh. there were some comments. Uh, Maybe we better adjourn first. <laughs> there were some comments in the local paper about you going off uh, to these various conferences oh. on on a uh, the public dollar, and I just wanted to tell you number one that I support you doing it because it is your job, so that's why you're doing it. But also, I don't know if people understand the connection between what you do and the way we run the city. But when we went up to Portland. Mm -hmm. uh, the three of us went up to Portland for a, a kind of a sustainable cities thing. Your name came up in at least two conversations yes. where in talking with people in Portland, uh, looking for a, I was looking for a little insider baseball information, and they said, oh, well, you're from Santa Barbara. You've got uh, Marty Bloom as your mayor. Well, listen, let me be able to help you. Mm -hmm. So whatever groundwork you lay when you go do these, these uh, nas national uh, mayoral conference things, has it reaps so many benefits yeah. for us when we go and, and try and get information associated well, from these very cities. And I just wanted good. to thank you for doing it good. on behalf of the entire community. It, because it is what you do and it's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. It's your job. And you do it very well. And we all well, thank uh, you. reap the benefits. Can I quit now? No, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes you've got to get the word out there because it doesn't get out there. And, I know. And, you know, I that's know. what's really going on. That's true. But we're having fun anyway. We're doing a good job. No matter if anybody tells us that or not. So there. Um, could we have item 20 and 21 read, please? Item number 20, conference with real property negotiator. And item number 21, conference with real property negotiators. Okay. Can we uh, adjourn from those? Okay. We'll go ahead and do that, not expecting anything to be reported out. And viva la fiesta, everybody. Eat and drink and be merry. That's what we're going to do. Spend money, enjoy. Watch the little dancers. They're great. Thanks.